So yeah, I want to I minister a little bit here on uh, forgiveness, and you don't have to raise, raise your hand, but um, I would bet if I would ask you to raise your hand, how many of us or you have um, struggled with forgiveness in the past, I'd probably see a lot of hands. And then if I'd asked you how many of you are still going through things today that involve forgiving, I'd probably still get a lot of hands. And uh, that's because we're human beings. And life can be hard. People can be rude. No one in here. But people can be rude. They can be insensitive. They can um, do terrible things. You know why? Hurting people hurt others. But we can overcome all of those things by the power of God within us. And that's what this message is about today. This entire service is about that. Now, I believe that the Holy Spirit will move in this service and move upon your heart. How many know that, that when you have a service, you don't always need to have like a prayer line, although we like prayer lines. Um, but some people think, oh, there was no prayer line or, or nobody was slain in the spirit or, or anything like that. Then there, must have, there wasn't anything going. I, I don't um, believe that. <laughs> More times than not, people's hearts are moved right in their seat. And they can walk out of here delivered, and no one would even know anything about it. That's how strong the anointing is. But let me say this, we, we've got to keep it down the middle of the road. We don't want to get into one ditch or another. There are times when we do have a call by the Holy Spirit for, for people to come up and get prayed for. That's not, this isn't one of those services, I don't believe, but we're always available for prayer. You can catch me before the service, after the service. You can come to the prayer team. But um, the, we're always available, but we've got to keep it down the middle of the road. And this service will be one that if you open your heart today, you'll overcome that terrible thing, terrible, terrible, terrible thing of unforgiveness. Turn in your Bibles, if you can, to Matthew 18, 21. I'm going to try to get through this in relatively decent time so we can worship then. And um, How many know it's, know it's good sometimes to switch things up, right? Uh, uh, a church that's led by the Holy Spirit will switch things up because the Holy Spirit says to. Some religious churches, it's the same way for 50 years. And don't you dare change anything that they do every Sunday because then you're, you're committing a big sin. You know, they get in these ruts and they get in these rituals and, and um, go through the motions. That's the last thing I would ever want anybody in here to ever do would, go through the, would be to go through the uh, motions. I, I would like to believe that the, the anointing on my life and the love of my heart for God and for you would be enough to... to um, in the power of the word, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we, only, we, don't, we don't only like to get you saved, get you in the kingdom of God, we like to introduce you to the Holy Spirit, right? He should be your best friend. I would believe with all of those things in play, we should be able to um, enjoy our life and to and overcome anything. But look at Matthew 18, 21, verse 22. This is New Living Translation. It says, then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. That's a lot. You know what Jesus was doing when he said 70 times seven? He was taking the limits off of forgiveness. He was taking the limits off. So we should take it off too. Amen? And Peter was putting a limit on it, wasn't he? He was saying, seven times? And is that my limit? Is that when I can do away with this person or have nothing to do with them ever again or things like that? And uh, um, Jesus, is, he took the limits off. He said, no, 70 times seven. I will say this before I go further. I understand that sometimes there are really, really hard, terrible things that happen. And uh, I'm not saying that forgiveness means that you put yourself back in harm's way either. 
And how many know that there are some people, and I'm not going to say your husband or wife or family, you know, cause you, but there are some people that you know or that, that maybe it's not good to be around them. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about forgiving. You can forgive someone and still not be around them. Amen? And so I'm not saying um, anything about that. And, and also, I want to let you know this. I'm not, like, um, belittling your feelings or belittling anything that you've gone through. I know, I know pain, and I know hurt, and I, I even know betrayal, and I know things like that. So I would never belittle that. All I'm doing is, is offering up the words that can give, get you out of that, that can deliver you and let you enjoy life again. God believes in having a good time. When Jesus was born, God sent, sent the angels to sing to everybody. Heaven's choir sang. Jesus went to the wedding feast. Many times you can see Jesus was at the feast enjoying himself. We're not to be the old fuddy-duddies that sit around. We're to be full of life. There's to be so much life oozing out of us that the world says, that's what I want. Amen? We're not to walk around like sour grapes. Or like I say, the look on our faces, there's a term called bitter beer face. You know, I'm not going to make the face this morning, but sometimes I do. But you know, you know, people see that. Your face sort of leads the way. Your face is front and center, isn't it? And uh, that's why I love our, our, our ushers so much. They're, they have a good countenance. And if anybody new comes in here, the first uh, people they see is Brother Jeff or Brother Lowell, and they see kindness. They see courtesy. They see someone that's interested in them. And so we have to watch our countenance, don't we? And, uh, um, but Jesus took the limits off of forgiveness. You know, Jesus didn't stop forgiving them when they put those stripes on his back. He didn't stop forgiving when they spit in his face. He didn't stop forgiving when they gambled for his clothing. And he didn't stop forgiving them when they hung him on the cross. That's our Lord and Savior. Amen. We're Christians. We bear his name. Or you could say Christians. I don't know if that's the correct way to say it, but that's what you are. Christians. You're you're. Children of the Most High God. Are we not to aspire to be Christ-like? Amen. Jesus said that the Father has forgiven us, so we are under an obligation to forgive everybody else. Amen. And so this is just, this is how we take the limits off of things. Now I know, like I said, in, I'm not asking you to do this in your own ability. I'm going to show you how to do it the way God said to do it. And when you're obedient to God and you follow his word, you're going to get the blessing because that's where all the power is at. Anytime you step out in faith and apply that word of God to your life, this word, the power of God will be there to accomplish what you set your mind to, what you set your heart to. So Webster's Dictionary definition of forgiveness is this, to give up resentment, to cease to feel resentment against an offender. Let me say it again. Forgiveness, the definition is to give up resentment, to cease to feel resentment against an offender. Some people say, I've forgiven because they're, they're lucky I didn't punch them in the face. I've forgiven them or I'd have punched them in the face. No, I don't believe you have. Punch, not punching somebody in the face is not forgiveness. <laughs> it, or they'll say, I didn't tell them off like I used to. Yeah, but you're telling them off to me, so you haven't forgiven them because you haven't given up the, the resentment. That's the part that hurts us so bad is the resentment. How many know that forgiveness is a choice? Amen. It's a choice. I'm going to ask you some questions, and you can see sort of where you're at. Like I said, not to step on any toes, but sometimes if you're preaching under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you can step on toes, if that's the word you want to use. And, but you know what? It's a good thing to be moved or to be hit by the word. Amen? Amen. And uh, sometimes when, I, when I'm preaching a sermon, because the Holy Spirit is so real and so strong, people will look at their, I see, the, I see them sometimes, they look at each other and they're saying, 
What'd you, what'd you tell them? What'd you tell them about us? I know nothing, right? And here's another important thing too. I never preach a message just to direct it at one person or just to try to get a par- point across at one person. I know sometimes people think that happens, but it doesn't happen. I, 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 I'm moved by the Holy Spirit and I'm moved by, I can be moved by the atmosphere in the church and the overall condition and atmosphere of what's going on. I can be moved by that, but I never intentionally try to put a message out there to hurt someone or to get a point across. If I want to get a point across to you, I'll just come and tell you, right? If you need, need to hear a point that bad. But um, if you happen to be in the middle of something that I'm teaching on, then go ahead and make the, cor- the corrections. But do you hold grudges? Do you keep records of wrongs people have done? Do you punish others with guilt trips? Do you continually, continually talk about everything people have done to you? If so, you are choosing the negative instead of the positive. If so, to steal a phrase from Sister Alma, you are choosing the bitter over the better. Amen? You are not choosing to forgive if you're in that category. But I want to stop here too because I feel the Holy Spirit prompted me to say this. This message is directed to each and every one of you on a personal level. I want today for you not to think about someone else that should be hearing this. Because it's going to like water down what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you. No, it's all you today. Right? Because if you can apply it, then you can make the whole situation better. But a lot of times people say, yeah, that, you know, my wife, she, I wish she heard this. She's, she really needs to hear this. No, you need to hear it because you're here today. And so I just wanted to um, throw that out there. And um, here's another thing. Sometimes we don't want to forgive because we want the other person to to hurt too. We want them to suffer. Oh, they got to hurt because they hurt me and I, I'm not letting them off the hook. No, unforgiveness lets you off the hook. Amen? Unforgiveness does not hurt them. It only hurts you. You have to remember that. I see sometimes people, they're upset and they hold grudges for a real long time and the other person that they're upset against... They're enjoying life. You're not hurting them. You're only hurting yourself. Forgiveness is an act of the will. It's an act of the will. Would you believe that? How many many of you, when, when somebody hurts you, do you really feel like forgiving them? You have to go past your feelings and past the the emotions of it all and just say, you know what? Jesus said, I am to forgive because the Father has forgiven me of everything I've done. Jesus has said that I can forgive. Jesus took the limits off of forgiveness. So I'm going to forgive that person by the power of God. You can do it. You see, emotions don't always heal by themselves. Sometimes people say time heals all wounds. That might be good for a broken bone or something, but time doesn't necessarily heal all emotional wounds, does it? I mean, there are emotional wounds. They're, they're, they're very powerful. So your will is involved in this forgiveness process, and your, it's your will that says this, even though I'm hurt, I choose to forgive. Even though I'm hurt, I choose to forgive. My voice went out a little bit, but that's all right. I choose to forgive. Now, here, here's the part that we want to get into. You might say, well, okay, I, I want to forgive, but I, I don't know how to forgive. And you might say, yeah, I, I, I am sort of like powerless to this, this emotion and these feelings, and that can be very much real. I'm pretty sure there's probably some in here today that are just so just the, the unforgiveness and the emotions controls them. Everything they do 
You want to talk about prison? That's an emotional prison. You might not be behind bars, but you are in prison every day of your life. And so we got to have the will to say, I'm going to do something about it. Now, as Christians, we follow the word of God. This is our guideline. The word of God gives us the instructions of how to forgive. And then we have the will and the faith. You always got to have faith in there. So you, you can't do anything without faith to believe that God's word is true. And you're going to make a decision that that, that negativity is going to lose its hold over me. Then you, then you make a decision to do it. You go for it. Go for it. When people make up their mind to do something, they can do great things. You don't even have to be a believer for that, right? You can do great things. But look at Matthew 5, 44. <clears throat> Jesus is going to tell us here what we do <clears throat> when we're in this situation. Jesus teaches a lot of good stuff, doesn't he? He is the master teacher. He is the one full of knowledge, full of wisdom, full of insight, full of everything that we need. He is the one who cares for you. I believe that, that too many times in today's world, the gospel's watered down, and the churches is watered down. And, and they say, well, we can't talk about certain subjects because the people don't like it. Where's that in the Word of God? We're, we're to be challenged by the Word. And, and, and pastors aren't to skip over a subject because they think that it might offend too many people. No, if the Holy Spirit tells me, I'm, I'm going to preach it. But, you know, one thing that I always endeavor to do is speak the truth in love. That always makes a difference, doesn't it? Difference. Look at Matthew 5, 44. This is Jesus. He says, but I say unto you, love your enemies and bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's a lot. No natural person without the power of God can do that. Unless you're Gandhi or somebody, but he probably had the spirit of God too. I don't know, but no natural person can, can do that. But Jesus never asked you to do anything in your own might. He says, not by might, not by your power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Do you know the Bible says that the love of God's been shed abroad in your heart? It's already in there, in the, in the presence of your born-again spirit, in the presence of the word of God, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The, the love of God is in there. All you need to do is tap into it understand it, get, get, uh, catch a vision of it, and then have a will. You got to have a will. You got to see this as winning or losing. If you, if you continue your life in unforgiveness, you're losing. You are losing. You're losing your joy. You can even lose your health. You can even lose your mental stability. You can, your mental well-being, you can lose relationships, you can lose family members, you can lose blessed time, and plus, if you're walking in unforgiveness, you're not going to receive anything from the Lord. We want our prayers answered, don't we? Amen. Amen. And so faith works by love. You'll receive the answer to get out of the unforgiveness. But we have to realize that forgiveness only hurts us, doesn't it? And so Jesus said this, look at this. He says, love your enemies. I want to stop right there. Love is a de decision too. Love is a choice as well. He's not talking about have ushy gushy feelings and go over and give them a big fat kiss or whatever. That's human type love. This type of love is the type of love that sent Jesus to the cross. This, he, went, he went to the cross because he loved the Father. He was obedient to the Father, and he was the one, he was the only one that could do it. Amen? And so this love is a decision. This is the decision to, to do these things. Here's, here's how you love them. 
Bless them that curse you. If you find an opportunity, do something good for someone that you might be struggling with. Maybe you could win that, turn that person over just with one act of kindness, and then you'll be good friends again. If you're, if you're struggling and, and you've been at odds with someone for a while now, why don't you give them a phone call and say, I've been thinking about you, and I want you to know that, that I love you and you're still important to me. If that applies to you, then, then go ahead and do it because you're putting some action to it. It would take a will to do that. I remember uh, one time in my life way back when, when I was just starting to follow the Lord. And, see, it pays to have the Holy Spirit. It pays to be sensitive to him because he's always speaking. He's always moving. And there was a person that wronged me, and they, they did me bad. They did, did me wrong. This is before I was even a preacher or anything. I, and uh, um, so I even asked three different people, and they all said, yeah, they did you wrong. Yeah, they did you bad. I, I had confirmation. And so I called him up, and I did something I think I have rarely ever, ever done in my entire life because it's just not part of my personality. I'm ashamed to say it, but I, I told them off. I gave them a tongue lashing. I didn't curse at them because I never had a problem with cursing. I don't believe Christians should curse. I believe Christians should bless. Amen? But, man, I, I told them off. And it felt good when I hung up that phone for about 10 seconds. And then all of a sudden, down and deep inside of me, I felt remorse over that phone call. See, have you gone along so long that you never feel remorse anymore? If I would have neglected or, or just not, just blew by those feelings and that, that, that remorse inside of me, I'd be you would call me Stonewall Jackson by now. I'd be Stoneheart John. But that's the thing. You want to know my greatest fear, if, if you can say it? My greatest fear as a believer is to have a hardened heart. Because I've come up with people with hardened hearts, and it scares me sometimes. Because they're, they, are, they don't move. And I've seen many of them go to the grave like that. And I don't want to be a person that's not moved. I want to be moved. I want to be um, sensitive. I want to forgive because the Father has forgiven me. I, I want to be grateful. And I want to remind myself that God loves that person that I'm having a feud with as much as he loves me. And maybe I can be part of the picture of helping restore that person back to the Lord. Or maybe if it's real extenuating circumstances where it's not just not good to be around that person, a good prayer would be, Lord, send people across their path so that they can get to know you. And so that they can get better. But anyway, I, I told them off. Felt good for 10 seconds. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, man. And the Holy Spirit said this. He didn't speak to me audibly. You know how you can hear from the Holy Spirit inside. He doesn't have to speak audibly to you. Just know he talks to you. He said, call him up and apologize. And I'm like, what? <laughs> That's going too far. <laughs> See, I was putting limits on it. And I forgot what Jesus said. Our forgiveness is unlimited. He said, call him up because you shouldn't have talked to him that way. And now you caused all these hard feelings and got this big mess and you need to apologize. And what they do with the apology is on them. So I picked up that phone. I'm sorry. Whatever. And uh, you know, I didn't have to elaborate either. I just said, look, I'm sorry for speaking to you that way. You don't have to apologize to some, for something that, that you didn't do wrong. But you can apologize for the hard feelings. You can apologize for maybe the way that you've reacted to certain things. These, these are things that God is talking about. And it, it, really, it really sets you free. I heard a woman uh, who uh, struggled with unforgiveness. In fact, it was uh, Lynette Hagen tells this story. And she struggled with unforgiveness. And so she went to her husband, Pastor Hagen, 
and said, how do you forgive? And he said, you just forgive. Now telling someone to just forgive, that, that's not, some people are just typically, they don't have no problem with forgiving. And he said, you just forgive. Well, that wasn't good enough for her. And so she went to Brother Hagen, and, uh, which is her father-in-law. And she says, how did you forgive? And he says, you just do. And she's like, so then she went to the one who has all the answers, Jesus Christ, (laughs) in prayer. And it was the Lord that led her to that verse that we had just read. Let's read it again here. He says, I say unto you. But you can put, you can change the scriptures around sometimes to make it personal. You can say it this way. Jesus said to me that I am to love my enemies. I am to bless those that curse me. I am to do good for those that hate me. And I am to pray for those that despitefully use and, 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 and persecute me. And so she went into uh, prayer and the Lord gave her this scripture. And he said this. Here's what the Lord said. I want that to be the first scripture you read every day. Remember we talked about the will? The will is willing to get on a game plan here and stay to it. He says, I want that to be the first scripture you read every day. Don't even miss a day. That's some willpower. Do you have the will today? To walk out of unforgiveness it might be easy sometimes to feel it, to be in that unforgiveness, but, but it's not pleasing to the Father. Amen? And we're not living up to our obligation because our obligation is to forgive others because we've been forgiven of so much. And plus, you might feel comfortable in it, but you're only hurting yourself. And it is a big, hindering, stumbling block to your spiritual growth. And it is also an easy spot in your life that the devil can, can uh, uh, get a hold of anytime he wants. All he needs to do is send somebody to push some button. Right? All he needs to do is get somebody to say and do something that, that touches a nerve. And then they're on your list too. Then before you know, you got a big list of, of do not talk to people. This is my list of people. If I see them at Walmart, I'm skipping into the next line. Oh, I'll keep going. Sometimes that happens, doesn't it? Oh, I'm just kidding. It's happened to me. I'll be transparent. I felt bad about that one, too. Anyway. But in that case, it wasn't really that I, that I um, had unforgiveness. I just didn't want to hear him talk to me for like a half hour straight. But I'm human too. Anyway, forget it. So, um, I hope when I'm transparent, you never hold anything against me. Because I'm growing too. I'm a work in progress. Nobody thought I was perfect anyway. Amen? But I will tell you something I am good at. I am good at forgiving. I am good at that. And so, I can um, thank God for that. And so he said, I want this to be the first scripture you read every day. And then he says, pray for anyone you have trouble forgiving. When you really forgive, you'll pray and not feel resentment against them. But it's a process. In the beginning, if somebody's, now let me just put put this in categories. If somebody just gets on your nerves and it's a personality conflicts and things like that, just get over it. Just, just let that stuff go. Why do you want to add that to your list of things? Just be civil with them. Be nice. Be, be cordial. Don't put that in the mix of everything. You've got too much other stuff to deal with. But I'm talking now about these people that have hurt you. These people that have told lies about you. These people that have disrespected you. These people that have maybe even in some cases broken your heart. Can you shut that door back there, Brother Lowell? Or someone can shut that. Can you shut that door back there? Okay. Um, I'm talking about those types of people. We need to um, 
We need to work on them. And so it's like an infection that, that you get. How do you take care of an infection? You get it out with an antibiotic, do you not? Now, you don't stop taking the antibiotic when you feel better. You, take it, you stop taking it when the prescription runs out. Well, that's how you get rid of unforgiveness. You got to pray it out. Prayer is our antibiotic, according to the word of God. Prayer heals, prayer of faith, that's moving out on the word. It heals the painful unforgiveness that we feel inside of us. You want to be set free? You want to enjoy your life again? You want to be so sured up? Do these steps. Let this be the first scripture that you read every morning. Now, if you don't have a will to do it, then you won't do it. But, but some of you will. All this message is, is, is something just to pry your heart open a little bit and get you seeing things a little different. Then we're going to worship the Lord. And, and, and just, just, but you've got you to gotta open your heart. You've got to make a decision. I'm going to be the best forgiver that God ever created. And I'm going to do it the way God said to do it. If you do that, you're going to be happy. You're going to be happy. If you want to be bitter, because that's what happens, extended unforgiveness is, leads to bitterness. If you want to be bitter, you can't be happy. You've got to choose. Did you ever hear somebody say, there goes that happy, bitter person? I've never heard that. So it's your decision, isn't it? So the prayer is our antibiotic that heals the painful unforgiveness. Through prayer, God empowers you to forget the past. This is, you know what this is? This is also an opportunity to step out on the word by faith and by love and by will. And once you see that word work in you, and you literally have that transformation by the power of God, you're no, more, you're no longer resentful towards that person. That's going to inspire you to believe God for more of his promises. That's going to inspire you to know that this word works. But you have to keep praying for him and, and read the scripture every day, and you've got to take it the whole course until that infection is out of your body, that infection of unforgiveness. And how will you know when it's out? When there's no more resentment. It's a good deal. So let me say this last thing, and, and uh, then we'll bring Sonona up here. Forgiveness begins in the heart. Start practicing it. Pray for the person who hurt you. Open your heart and say, I forgive you. Forgiveness will set you free. And that's what we want. We want you free. We want you free and happy and healthy. Sister Sonona, if you could come up here and and we're going to go into our, our worship part. And what, what Sedona's going to do, we're going to do two worship songs. And uh, so open your heart right now. This is a continuation of my message. Open your heart and uh, just, just um, as, you're singing, as you're singing it, just have your conversation with the Lord and, and, and speak to the Lord and say, Lord, I have a will that I'm going to forgive these people. I'm going to let it go. And just open your heart and then let the Lord minister to you. And so after these uh, two worship songs, I'll come and speak to you, whatever the Holy Spirit. I have no idea what I'm going to say to you, but the Holy Spirit will give it to me when it's time. And I'll minister to you and I'll pray over you. And then we're going to do a praise song to end up with. And we're going to shout, shout about the victory. Because that's how you do it. We don't wait till we see the results before we shout. When the walls of Jericho came down, did they shout, oh, the walls are down, yoo -hoo. No, they shouted, then the walls came down. So let's worship the Lord. Would you rise, please, and just, just honor him today?